Benny Goodman was one of the most memorable band leaders in the history of jazz. He was desperately trying to get a big break while living in New York City in the 1930s. He had earned a reputation as a classically trained clarinetist for being able to play any style of music, classical, traditional dance tunes like waltzes, foxtrots, and polkas, as well as the new hot jazz style, making young dancers jump, shout, and start to learn the jitterbug dance steps in hundreds of dance halls throughout America. He was in demand as a studio musician playing on records and radio, but he desperately wanted to be a big band leader. But Goodman felt his music sounded much like everyone else's. In an attempt to find the missing piece of the puzzle, Goodman would haunt the dance halls of Harlem, searching and listening, trying to find the elusive component he needed. His music was top-notch, though, and Benny was a true perfectionist, hiring the best musicians he could find. He rehearsed them relentlessly, expecting the band to execute the arrangements exactly as he did, and to work as hard at achieving the absolute perfection in tone, rhythm, and articulation, just as he did. He would be remembered as one of the best clarinetists in history, especially with his ability to play in the upper register, a.k.a. the high notes. As a result, the precision of his band was unlike any other, and this may have been the thing that turned out to be his key to success. Benny was able to get a job playing all summer in 1934 at a brand new venue, the Billy Rose Music Hall at 52nd and Broadway in New York, the very same theater that would be the home of the Ed Sullivan Show and the late show with David Letterman. Just as Goodman was on his very last night of playing with his band in the Billy Rose Music Hall, an advertising agency rep came in to hear them perform. He said to Benny, there's a new radio show being put together, featuring three hours of music and showcasing three different regular bands. Goodman seemed suspicious, but then he heard the last hour of the network radio show was going to be genuine jazz, or hot jazz, the kind of music Benny had been looking to play with his amazing band of musicians. Benny auditioned with his orchestra and was one of the two finalists. In order to decide who would get the job, the advertising agency piped the music into the mailroom and secretarial pool, comprised mostly of young men and women, who voted on which band they thought was best. Goodman would win by just one vote. The radio show was called Let's Dance. The series premiered December 1st, 1934, showcasing three hours of music by three winning bands. One hour featured the mellow music of Kel Murray performing waltzes and polkas. The next hour had the Latin rhythms of Xavier Cugat. And the final hour featured Benny Goodman's group, which was described as a standout big band and downright thrilling, according to writer George Simon. It was a turning point for Goodman and the show was the big break he was waiting for, broadcasting his music live across America on the CBS radio network. Although it was not smooth sailing and there were still going to be some additional twists and turns in Benny Goodman's pursuit for success, it was the start of something big. Within a year, he would be named the King of Swing, and he ushers in the swing era just when jazz was at its peak. And well, as they say, the rest is history. You can check out Benny Goodman and his orchestra playing King Porter Stomp, one of his early hits for dancers, in the link below. And if you like this video on swing, you can visit the Rock and Roll Professor website for more opportunities to learn about swing, rock, jazz, and blues artists. Count Basie, Doris Day, Louis Armstrong, or Billy Joel, Linda Ronstadt, Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, and Howlin' Wolf. Plus a lot more. Visit the website for complete details and class lists.